I don't do intros anymore, but I wanted to introduce this car because the story is I'm walking through Toyota Tread Pass. Every single year, Toyota Tread Pass has honestly some of the best cars of the show, at least the ones that speak to me. And this one definitely blew me away, but I didn't know the backstory. I asked my buddy Stan, who runs Toyota Tread Pass, and he's like, yeah, it's this kid. You know, he he built this uh, over time. He, he didn't even have a, a, or maybe he had a driver's license already, but he got it when I he was 17. I got it before I had a driver's license. Yo, yeah. you got it before you had a driver's license. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now it's here and it's incredible, all that. I looked at it, craftsmanship is amazing. It's so good. And you did end up being yep. top three, but second place, Battle of the Builders, Young Guns. Yep. And then we have mom here who <laughs> kind of was along for the journey. And the reason why I wanted to have you on camera is because the unloading process, getting it here, I, I just hear you talking about your son and how proud you are yes. of your son. And uh, honestly, I'm proud of him too, you know, because he's going to be inspiring the next generation. Individuals like Cam are really continuing this. How did you know about this or how did you okay. start? This, this is a fun story. Yeah. So when Cameron was very small, he started saving his money. He was probably about six when he opened his car account. And he did jobs around the house. He started little entrepreneurial businesses and he saved pretty much every penny that he earned. I always told him, when you're 16, you're gonna come to me and you're gonna say, you want a car? And I'm gonna say, how much is in your car account? And so by the time he was 16, he had actually saved $15,000 for his car. And so his grandfather was so blown away by the fact that he had saved that much money that when we went and purchased the car using Cameron's money, his grandfather replenished all the money and told him to do amazing things with the vehicle. I have to pause there and say that our big family joke is that his father and I had no idea that this was going to become what it was. We truly thought it was a daily driver. And me, being an overprotective mom, wanted to make sure that he had the safest car possible. <laughs> so I insisted that it was a low mileage vehicle, and I insisted that he bought a certified Toyota from a dealer because I wanted him to have a warranty. About two weeks after he had purchased the car, he didn't even have his driver's license yet, he started pulling it apart, and it was in pieces all over our garage. And I was just completely mortified because I couldn't believe what he was doing. And then when he took out a saw and started cutting into it, I was beside myself. And little by little, as pieces got cut off and taken away, we started realizing what happened. And the family joke is also, we never really realized what the car was gonna become. I think he always knew what it was gonna become. It just took us a little while yeah. to catch up to it. <laughs> okay, so there's so many questions. You were 17 when you got the car. Did it ever end up being your daily driver at all? Did you even drive uh, it? For like uh, two months. And was it manual or automatic? It was automatic back then. Okay, so it's automatic and you drove it for two months. What did, what did you do? Did you walk everywhere else? Family minivan. Family minivan. <laughs> Let your pride go there so you can build something crazy. <laughs> Just so everybody's clear, mom and dad, totally not into cars, into mountain bikes. How did you get inspired to get into cars? So honestly, it was just the artistic element. I was always into the uh, physical art and like just painting and that sort of thing. And then I started when I was about 16, honestly, getting into the actual creativity and the extensiveness of what you could do with a car because there's just so many facets that you can go with that. And then, yeah, I just started researching, uh, developing knowledge and then took it to where it is now. About two and a half years ago, I moved off to college and I got a small like storage unit shop. I picked up a Harbor Freight welder, taught myself to TIG weld, and then built the entire full roll cage as the first welding project. After that, I had, it pushed my skills so much because I was laying upside down with the foot pedal on the roof in all these weird positions. And then I realized I was kind of good at it and I wanted to just go all the way, build a full tube chassis. This is your first time at SEMA. This is also your first SEMA show. Did you have any idea of how grand and how great it is in terms of a celebration of car modifications? I, I did a little bit. Um, you know, they, uh, his father and, and he went to SEMA in 2019. I've learned a lot since 2019 and um, 
you know, understand the significance of Toyo and to Toyo Tread Pass. As well as Battle of the Builders Battle and the Young Battle of the guns. Builders, and I've kind of learned through him, um, and he's wonderful in that way that he shares with us and brings us into the fold. So we were super excited when he went to SEMA. And I understood it was big, but being here and experience it and seeing it, you don't really understand it until you're here. The thing is, it's one thing to have a SEMA car, right? It's one thing... Honestly, it's not that hard to get your car into the show inside or even in a pretty prestigious booth, but it's really hard to stand out over everyone else because there's just so many cars. Yes. And um, what was your reaction to other people kind of losing their mind um, with this I cried. Build? I cried a lot. Um, a lot of people talked to me about him and his car and... Um, the feedback that we got just really warmed my heart because it was just really heartfelt excitement and, you know, seeing him uh, experiencing that and hearing that really heartfelt feedback from people that we didn't even know. It really made me realize just how big it is what he created. That's incredible. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. All right. So let's dig into it. Uh, 2015 FRS. It's totally, completely redone. I can't believe you tubbed the entire front end all the way up to where, here? Yeah, so it goes to here, and then throughout the interior, it branches through and out into the rear end, but just a quick rundown on it. So yeah, it's completely rebuilt. The suspension components are moved around slightly, slightly different geometry. Um, there's none of the original suspension pickup points in the front or the rear. The only thing left on the inside is actually the floorboards. So I did that because I thought it would make it easier to design and build my first tube chassis. It actually makes it a lot harder because there's that waviness in the old floor and it's quite difficult to tie it in. So yeah, the tubes kind of pull through the car and then sort of spread out through the rear and then into the cantilever rear end. So this is kind of the feature of the car that actually blew me away the most. I've never ever seen a cantilever airbag setup. Yes. You know, there's just so many of these builds now that in because of packaging, they need to do this. Oh, I, and that's why I did it. It just seemed like it, f it fit weird with the distance between this tube and the lower control arm, that the easiest way to do that was to build a prototype and then develop a full cantilever system for the car. It's tubed from the front all the way back yes. or, or all the way to here. And then some of this, the floor is original. Yes. What about this? Is, this is all original, right? It's all original, but it's not relying on any of the structure. So all of the beams and everything under here are cut out and it's just the cage holding up everything up here. So. But where did you figure out the plans for this? Like, did you just mock up something to figure out, oh, okay, so this is the suspension point. Yeah. How so, do you even know this is the same as that? So I had a couple pickup points that I left underneath the car and I built a jig off of that, off the original car, pulled the jig off, cut the whole front off, put the jig back on, and then I could work there from there on what I thought needed to change to make the car uh, handle how I wanted it to handle. Hmm, interesting, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. And then so, the back portion, how much of the back is tubed versus so still? You original. can kind of point it in there. It's mm -hmm. completely tubed in the back. All of the pickups are brand new. All of the structure back here is brand new. It has, I actually use trailer tubs to recreate the wheel tubs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there, it's actually tubbed four inches higher radius all the way around. So crazy, I can't believe you did all of these welds. Every single one. Okay, so, so then, and you have this panel that acts as kind of like a firewall, but um, you're just leaving it off right now. Yeah, so I just pulled the panel off just so there, just there's so a lot of see. exciting yeah. stuff going on underneath there with how I have the radiator tilted to pull from the bottom, sort of like a trophy truck. I, I like to take a lot of inspiration from the trophy truck guys, how they fabricate stuff and how they package everything. So I, I tilted the radiator like that. I have my air suspension system under there. I have my water pump under there. Um, and then a lot of the wiring is actually housed under there as well. There's just so much going on. So what subframe is that? So it's actually an FRS subframe. The diff has been raised. The axle areas have been notched out. It has been stiffened. Um, but overall, the actual subframe is the same. And then it's using a complete set of FDF fab arms, as well as solid bushings and everything in the rear. 
And where did you actually build this? You didn't have a full-on shop. No, so it's kind of like a storage unit shop hybrid. I started it, I think it is about 450 square feet in the, in the shop, and then I, I got the shop next to it, so about 900 square feet for storage. And it's interesting to me because this is, uh, is this its third phase, or what, what phase would you call this? Because you were mentioning that you did do a kit and you lowered yeah, so it. And I would say this is, is the third phase of the car as well as my learning process. So I did the kit, I did the wheels, and I did bags initially. Just basically what every 17 year old would want to do. And then, like I said, when I moved out about two and a half years ago, um, I learned to weld and I built the roll cage, which the roll cage was just a roll cage at that point. And I finished the car. And then I kind of realized my skill and my aptitudes with fabrication as well as the design process, and I moved on to designing the full chassis. And then, so you started when you were 17, you're 22 now. I'm 21. Oh, you're yeah. 21 now. Yes. Um, and it's pretty much taken that long for you to get it to this point. Yes, the whole time. Basically about 5,000 hours into the car. Um, I didn't mention, but I did all of the fabrication on the whole car, all of the paint work, all of the body work. You Abs did the paint. Yeah, it, it's got a little bit, micro scratches now from people rubbing into it. But yes, I did the, all of the paint in the storage unit shop. I, do, I don't even know what to say about that. Were you able to pick up some sponsors along the way? Yes, or? so that was after my mom mentioned, my, my grandpa helped me out massively. The sponsors were really what made this car possible because as most of you know, this car does not cost that little to produce something this uh, in depth. So can pan in on the sponsors here. All of these companies are really what made it happen. And I am so thankful to every single one of them for taking a chance on a 19, 20 year old, as well as Stan for putting the car in Toyota Tread Pass. Cause it is a gamble with somebody that's unproven in the car industry and somebody so young, but. Uh, there's so much left to dig into, but I just wanted to pause for a moment. What, what do you, what's next for you? Like, is this what you want to do for work? I don't really plan to build uh, customer cars just because it kind of limits the creativity, I think. But I really want to start a automotive like manufacturing company to mass produce parts, as well as continue building the cars to develop the technologies and concepts and promote the business end of it. Okay. So kind of a mix there. So you want to make uh, parts like, and part of it is uh, potentially you can develop the parts on cars that you build. Yeah, so if I'm interested in a, a new chassis or something that I'm just interested in and I think there's a gap in the market, I could build a car, develop that part on the car and then build the car way crazier than it needs to be just to promote the whatever I'm building as much as possible. Okay, and another thing is, you know, the audience were looking at this and yes. people had a chance to see this in the, uh, the show, but people, most people, when they look at this, they assume that it doesn't run because of how clean and neat it is. Yes. But it does actually run. It does run and we, we will be able to fire it up in a little bit, but it's an LS3 made to do a Tremec Magnum F and then it is a Haltech harness that is spliced, lengthened and shortened to create this super clean, almost Bluetooth wiring harness look. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm glad you use that yeah, um, term. People keep using that, like I, I know on your, your post of photos of it, a lot of people were saying that, but I have the coil packs actually tucked back here. So they go through a grommet under here, everything's uh, extended. I you know, love, this? love, love the fact that the uh, air filter is here. Yes. The intake goes in here, it makes a turn, air filter is here. Um, and then there, there's gussets that are like multi-purpose, like <laughs> to strengthen this panel. Yeah. And on top of that, it's for air to go in, like multifunctional design yeah. and form. Um, and then this is super cool too. Your fluids yep. hidden under here, tilting, uh, is it a pedal box? Tilting? Yeah, it's a fully like balanced bar pedal box setup. Um, yeah, but that, that reversed intake is really what makes this centerpiece, which is the equal length eight to one possible. Because if the filter was here, this would not be able to have this big 
flowing, like high up over the top eight to one setup. So this is becoming a little more popular. It is. Over the years, but what made you want to do this? And did you build this yourself? I built the entire header. So I used one of those eight to one, or the um, Ice Engine Works, like orange kits where they snap together. And I got all of the runners designed with that to 32 and a half inches. And then I basically taped them together, pulled them off and then transferred them to the stainless. And just like everything else on the car, this was my first time welding stainless. I had to get all the back purge equipment and everything. Did you have any points where you potentially made a mistake and then you had to redo a lot of this stuff? Uh, thankfully, no, on the, the stainless here. There was a couple little things on the chassis where I was really starting to learn to weld, where I had to like grind something out or something because I was in a weird position and it lost gas coverage. But on the header, no, it, was, it went perfect all over. I'm so fully blown away. Um, do you know around how much power this potentially could make? About right 525 in its stock configuration. This has a bigger intake pipe, bigger exhaust, um, higher flow injectors. So I'm, I'm hoping for about 550, but it has not been dynoed yet. And then what about the front suspension setup? So okay, arms, so all of that. It's on a FDF Fab angle kit. That is also, uh, I worked with them to develop a kit that worked with the chassis since it is a little bit unique up here, especially in the rear. It was quite unique. They had to build some custom arms back there. But it is on bags. I can swap back and forth. I I wanted to get this this super nice fitment for now, and then I can kind of go from there. If I want to make it more track oriented, more show oriented, I can fairly quickly switch it back. Mm -hmm. And wh what are you actually going to use this for? As of right now, mostly just a show car. Eventually, it might be transitioned to time attack car, a drift so car, something along those lines. But for now, it's really just a promotional car and a portfolio of what I can create at this point in my life. Incredible. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> this uh, rear splitter thing is pretty cool too. Yes, so this was pretty much the last thing I made for the car. Um, it's all just aluminum. It has little aluminum brackets under here and it is functional. It goes quite far underneath the car, and then I mounted it with these quite heavy-duty tube clamp setups. And then I forgot to mention back here, we have the Radium fuel cell. They were a sponsor of the build. Um, these are super common with the in-cell surge tank. It has the dual pumps in there. How were you able to figure out the geometry for this? Okay, yeah. So this is actually what kind of blew me up initially on Instagram. I built a wood prototype where I had these wood triangles and flat pieces of wood and I just kept testing it until everything functioned and the ratios worked exactly how I wanted it to work. And then I hand cut all of these pieces with an angle grinder and a hole saw and then welded them together. That's the other thing is everything on this car was cut with hole saws, drills and angle grinders. There's no like laser cut, no CNC, which I hope to move into at some point because it would definitely make it quicker. Right, because you don't have the tools now, but you kind of made do with what you had. Yeah. And then now that you've kind of proven that you can do all this crazy stuff mm -hmm. with the tools that you had, uh, now hopefully it kind of opens the door for you to try other Absolutely. things. Absolutely, and you can I, only, yeah, you can only focus on so much skill development at one time too. So that's the other thing. This is crazy. Okay, so once this is completed, you will have to put a back window here. I don't know, like, that work? It, it hasn't had a back window for a couple of years and it just kind of became a thing that everybody liked the n no back window. So at least for now, I, I don't think I'm gonna put a back window on it. And the radiator fill is actually right under here. So I do need to be able to get this panel off oh, to fill the radiator. That is so cool. This cage, is it legal for any kind of sanctioning body? So I built the cage as an FD spec cage. If I left it as the cage, it would be FD spec, but I went through the firewall, I went through the back, I got rid of the shock towers, and then it kind of eliminates it from any racing like that. But I have my anti-gravity battery down here. The whole car is running on a Haltech Elite 2500. Um, there's all these aluminum panels that create the dash and create like the center console area. Um, it has an S1 sequential shifter mounted, mounted to the Tramic Magnum F. And then uh, I kind of made this custom bezel here for the handbrake. It is not plumbed completely right now. That's one of the only things I need to finish. 
And then yes, back here with the exhaust, it has dimple dies, you have the drive shaft back there, air tanks, and a bunch of other interesting things. Oh, I didn't even realize that was air tank right there. Yeah, okay. yeah, air tank is there and then the compressor is actually underneath there also. So as we mentioned, Tilton, balance bar setup, it's an underfloor pedal setup. HEL Performance did all of the brake lines on this car. Have the Recaro bucket seats as well as these um, Williams X Night Runner harnesses. This is really clean. I love the dash setup. Thank and you. I also love that all of this is functional. And yeah. It looks great, and you're really doing your sponsors justice. And then also, I wanted to leave this open under here uh -huh. so that you can really see how clean the wiring and everything is. That it's not at all a rat's nest. You just have the small fuse box under there, and then really nothing else. There are some 3D printed pieces here too. So uh, Street Faction helped me with the door cards. They made the 3D printed bezels and everything for the windows and the locks and all of that. Um, and then the, I made the steering column. It's like a basically a chromoly shaft inside of another chromoly shaft. And then it's held up again with the tube clamps. And then I have like, we are likewise custom steering wheel. It's got my name on it right there, as well as the, the shift knob. There's so in. much, yet it's simple. I mean, because the, how many Rocket Bunny FRSs are out there? You know, that was There's that hundreds was. At it's this basically point. the car car of the show at one point at SEMA. It was just so many. It was. Yeah. That's kind of where the whole over Fender Nationals kind of comes from. You know. And yeah. <laughs> there's just so many little touches that I I'm seeing on this vehicle. That really blow me away, and also that just, I don't know, it, it, I appreciate it, you know? Well, thank like you. Like the simple things, like you got a helmet hook. I noticed where your your uh, toe hook is all the way down here. Yes. Um, uh, just on the tube chassis, that way, you know, it doesn't interrupt Yeah, so it comes up anything. just high enough yeah, that, that it is, can make it over. That is just so neat. Yeah, and everything I like- I love that so much. The second bar is actually, kind of like sort of like a power brace setup on like they use them on like S chassis and that and I kind of wanted to replicate that look. It did add a lot of strength in um, holding the studs for the front lower control arms, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna mention something that maybe, I don't know if you're embarrassed about or, or whatever, but you actually don't know how to drive stick. I, I did not know how to drive stick at all. Um, yeah, so, um, I built the car, it is a very aggressive manual, and then I drove it once, I put it into first gear, did two laps around my shop, loaded it in the trailer, and then drove it into Tread Pass. And that's kind of the, as much you've driven in terms of manual transmission cars? And then after that, I had to drive it from Tread Pass to the Battle of the Builders section, and then I was like, okay, I'm done. The stress is off. And then they say, you have to lead the parade through the stands with the tw top 12 Battle of the Builders cars. I'm like, okay, uh, I'll be able to do this. And then Tanner Faust announces, we have over 55,000 people in the stands and I'm just there terrified, like, oh my God, I, I can't stall it. I'm gonna make myself look like a fool. But no, I, I made it through. This car is your first manual transmission car and it didn't even come in manual. Nope. I mean, not that it really matters, but like which it came in, because there was nothing left. But of yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that just that just blows my mind no, it, so much. I love that so much. I mean, because you are so passionate about yeah. what you do, and you are yeah, you are just so you're a builder. You know, you're a builder. Through builder, through. designer. Like I love the engineering. And like that always, like I was like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, I just wanna build this and then I'll figure it out later, which I am doing in probably the most stressful scenario ever with the most people filming and watching, but. Um, that kind of begs the question, what's actually next? Are you gonna develop this car more? Or are you gonna start another project? What do you, what I are you think this car next? is pretty much good how it lives. There's a couple little things like finishing up so like I can see my, my speed <laughs> and what gear it's in and those type of things, but overall, the car is going to stay how it lives and probably stay like that forever. Okay, so can you start it so we can at least hear what it's I like? can start it. Hopefully I haven't Jeez. killed the battery at any point. Uh, it's going to sound crazy.
Oh my god, it, it just goes to the ground. Yeah, it has Stuff a muffler. Like. It uses it as a muffler. I am blown away. If you pan down here, we got the duel. Yeah, like it's four super pins. cool. Yeah. Love that wheel with setup. You can see how they're not even like broken in yet. Yeah. We didn't even get to talk about the wheels. Why, why these wheels? Well, I mean, Workmeister S1s are iconic, and I've always loved just the super simple design. As with everything else on the car, there's beauty and simplicity. So, same with the wheels. The, uh, I custom built these wheels. That is the biggest lip that Work makes, seven and a half inches in the rear. Um, and yeah, they're br clear brushed with matte black faces, and they just, I feel like, tie the whole car together beautifully. So then, and then why black? Well, I just really like the industrial style of just like the bolted look, blacks, grays, everything. It might change at some point on a different car, but... I mean, the, the whole car. Yeah, yeah, same. Oh, I same. just really like Got that it. very dark industrial style. Right. I, I almost went to purple, like a Porsche Ultraviolet, but then I, I stuck with black. I think, I think black makes a statement because the build kind of stands by itself. Yeah, I didn't want to go overboard and yeah. push it past with the color. I can give it a little rev now. Sure. And pop the breaker. <laughs> okay. Well, there you have it. To all those haters on my Instagram, on Cam's Instagram, that says it doesn't run. It does. It does, and it drove around SEMA. Uh, I'm just so happy to be able to document this in this part of your career, this stage. I mean, it's just so early. You have so yeah. much amazing things to do going forward, you know? and. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, thank you. Really, it's gonna be in incredible. I'm very excited to see what this leads. It's been a crazy experience. So much media coverage. I've met so many people. Thank you for this. But yeah, it has been crazy. Incredible. All right, huh? cool. See you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.